There are talks around um, Alex Iwobi um, being given the number 10 jersey for the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Do you think he deserves to wear the number 10 jersey? Do you think he's the main playmaker in the Super Eagles? Knowing that the way he plays in Arsenal is quite different from how he plays back home in Nigeria. He's not the playmaker in Arsenal. He plays as a winger in Arsenal. But in Nigeria here, they want him to play as a top man who plays from the middle. Do you think that's possible for Alex Iwobi? It's possible for him because if you look at that forward line, mm. I think uh, he is one player that has shown cons consistency mm. and is almost three or four years, I mean, three years old in that team. Mm. So he has established himself. The other ones are just coming up. Chukwese, for instance, is just coming up. Mm. So uh, I know there is a lot of sentiment attached to that Jesse number 10, made popular by the great Pele and also. It, become, it became iconic when Maradona too mm -hmm. uh, wore it and uh, everybody adored Maradona and now you have a Lionel Messi wearing it. So that's... Let's not take away J.J. Okocha. Yeah, J.J. Okocha. <laughs> I know I'm talking of those okay, outside okay. our shows. Yeah, true. So that way, that number 10 became very iconic and players who put it on are always seen as the top uh, playmakers in their team. Mm. They, I mean, they decide which direction a particular match will go and they are also very, very influential within the team setup. So mm. I think he deserves it, just like any other playmaker in uh, the team too can deserve it. Mm. Knowing that um, when you play club fo football, you play more than 20 matches in a season. And when you come down to play for your country, probably Nations Cup, for example, if you go all the way to the finals, you are seven matches. playing six to seven matches in a tournament. Now, you being used to a particular style in your club, don't you think it will, it, it will um, create a sort of hindrance to how the player performs when he comes back home to play for the national side? You know, in most cases, you have players having different roles in their mm. clubs. It depends on the formation that the manager of the team, the man we call the coach, actually want to employ. Mm. We've seen instances, for instance, if I can take you back, when uh, a player like Mudalawa, the late Mudalawa was mm. playing for shooting stars, he was almost on his strike, I mean, uh, being played as a striker. Mm. But when in the national team, he was a midfielder, even though supporting the strike, the strike force team. and sometimes switch, uh, switch position to be a holding midfielder or even a defensive midfielder, mm. depending on the opposing teams. So yeah, the coach has to have an understanding of the opponents before you can now deploy any player for a particular role. If you can recall, even when Algeria in, in defeating us, they said they, they already studied our team. They knew that well, somebody like Chukwu is a play with power, he has the strength, he has the energy. So they have to employ a strategy that will neutralize him. Mm -hmm. They knew that somebody like uh, Ahmed Musa is very pacey. I mean, before he was operating from the right wing, but on this, in this competition, largely played from the left right. wing. So they knew that the, the main asset he has was speed. Mm. And the moment they are able to contain that speed, they knew that they have already neutralized the Nigerian offensive. Mm. So it depends on the coach. When the coach sees that, okay, this particular player has this role within our team and he will do it where he do it. Look at Victor Moses, for instance. Victor Moses was given almost a free role in the qualifying series mm. for the World Cup. But back in Chelsea, he was a win back. And he now tried to play that role in the team where he had a free role during the World Cup, the three matches he played. And you, everybody can recall that he wasn't really his natural self. True. The same way he was playing for the Super Eagles in the World Cup qualifying series, we had a different person entirely at the World, World Cup. Cup. So when there's a switch of role, and if the coach does not have a clear vision or a clear idea of what he wants to get, then that player will just be messed up on the pitch. Mm, very true, that player will be messed up on the pitch. So it uh, actually boils down to um, the coach and the player's um, 
um, capability, a capacity to um, absorb whatever the coach is throwing at him and uh, on the football pitch, being able to uh, deliver as well. But let's look at the positives from um, the Super Eagles team at this tournament. Yes, most of the football fans out there, they keep looking at the negative side of um, the performance of the Super Eagles, but I'm sure there's a lot of positives to take from this one. Now, um, from the goalkeeping department to the midfield to uh, the attacking department, from the goalkeeping department, we have three goalkeepers. For me personally, I would have preferred Francis Uzoho to have manned the post from the start of the tournament. But we had it done in Lakbe. And uh, some have said that most of the goals that he considered were not even his fault. Probably defensive errors and all that, but we keep faulting the goalkeeper. There was, and he considered a couple of goals. Um, Ike Chukwe Zenwa came in against uh, Madagascar, considered two goals. Francis Uzoho came in against Tunisia. He finished with a clean sheet. Does this tell us that Francis Uzoho should be made our number one goalkeeper? And in the midfield position, yes, Mikel Lubi was at the tournament, but he was not at the tournament, in quotes, because he was not on the football pitch to play. He was. He uh, played, he played uh, two matches. Two matches, but yeah. in the latter stages of the game, because of injuries and all that. But the midfield position, the young lads that we have there, are they quality enough to lead the Super Eagles? Let's just look at the team performance and see the positives we can pick from this. Well, let's look at the defence first, mm. the goalkeeping area, which has been a problem uh, position for the Super Eagles in the past three years. Mm. Since uh, the exit of uh, Vincent Enyama mm. and the uh, illness of Kali Keme, mm -hmm. there has been a yawning gap in our goalkeeping era. And a goalkeeper is, a, I mean, it's very crucial in a team. Mm. But when you have an Izoho, I mean, for, before Izoho, it used to be Akpeyi. Akpeyi at the national team was always constantly jittery. Mm -hmm. So it was because of that that, well, the search for another goalkeeper. Then we found uh, Ikechuku Ezenwa, Ezenwa, who was very, very good in the matches against Cameroon mm. and also the match against Zambia, I mean, the latter stage of the World Cup qualifiers. qualifying series. But somehow, I, I want to believe that something must have gone wrong. Because mm. even in his former club, before he changed club, he was in Ayimba. He, he, I mean, he lost his starting position mm -hmm. to Tufilos Afelo Kai. Okay. So that means something must have happened to him. Mm. That sudden drop in form that if you don't command a, I mean, the starting uh, shirt in your club, how then can you command a starting shirt in the Super the national team? Because the national team is not supposed to be a rehabilitation center mm -hmm. whereby, okay, okay, don't worry. If they are not uh, handling you well in your club, we will accept you here. Mm. And because that appears to be what has happened in our goalkeeping uh, department. department. All the goalkeepers, I'm sorry to say, it's like they were just being rehabilitated <laughs> by the national team. Zoho was playing a third division club in Spain. He could not even command the starting, starting shirt. So if the, 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 the last of the goalkeepers in a third division club is, I mean, it's our best. Mm. It speaks volume about the quality of goalkeepers, I mean, goalkeeping mm. in Nigeria. And then you also talk about uh, the midfield. No, I mean, it's still on the, on, oh, the goalkeepers. On, on the goalkeeper. You look mm. at Daniel Akwey. He came back this time around. He looked a bit more com uh, composed, but he is still very error prone. Mm. Look at the last minute. Uh, goal he considered from that free kick. It's not the first time, even in the national team. Mm -hmm. If you watch the clip of the match we played against Argentina, the one we, uh, we, we, we defeated Argentina four goals to two, the opening goal was from a similar free kick. Mm -hmm. To start with, he committed that foul leading to the, the, free, uh, to the free kick. A very elementary error. A goalkeeper handling the ball outside the box mm -hmm. is a foul and a free kick. And that same free kick, you formed a defensive wall and you stood behind your uh, defense wall. Mm. I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's an elementary error. No, a primary school goalkeeper would not have even done that, <laughs> would not have committed such an error. Mm. You stood behind your goalkeeper, I mean, behind your wall, and any player, you don't even need the skill, you see a yawning gap, you just play straight 
True. to it. True. And how do you know when the ball is even kicked? Because you are standing. Your views are already obstructed because you are standing behind your wall. Mm -hmm. The same thing happened in the match against Algeria. You are standing behind your wall. As a goalkeeper, you see the, the field or you see the open field. You are in a position to even close some gaps. To, to arrange your wall, and then the area that is open, that is not defended, that's, the, that's your own core area. Because it will take a Leno Messi to curve the ball mm -hmm. over the defensive wall to enter into an area that has been already secured. Mm -hmm. So he committed that error. So uh, because of that, I still believe that, thank God the competition has ended, Thank God, another competition is starting in September, the World Cup qualifying series, even though we will not be involved in that. We, will, we may not even play until uh, December or even uh, 2020 yeah. for that. And the same thing with the African Cup of Nations qualifying series mm. for 2021, because the draws will be made today. Wow. So with all those things in view, what we should now be thinking is not... Uh, we should not be thinking about how we miss playing the final, but how we, we move on. How we should move on, especially in a year where our national team is clocking 70. Mm. So we should not be able to say, okay, at 70, we should not be able to uh, press further and build on the, our errors. And the, the players that we see as young, we still groom them. And then the areas where we know we have uh, the, the the biggest uh, error, which is the goalkeeping, which you should not start searching for goalkeeper. He, the goalkeeper does not mean to. I mean, does not uh, have to come offshore. Mm. We can search for good goalkeepers even within our domestic league. Mm. Okay, We're looking forward to that one and hoping that things can get sorted in the national team. And of course, uh, this is the first time in a very long time that we'll get to see all 22 players used in a tournament. 23. And 23 players used in that tournament. So I think it's a good one. Uh, we should give uh, the coach and the players kudos to that one as well. Now, moving on from there, we know that um, True Stekong was awarded as uh, the man of the match in that one and I think he gave a good account of himself in as much as he scored that own goal in uh, uh, the game against Algeria and it kind of cost us um, qualifying for the finals of that tournament. Well, rap running so fast now, let's go over to the top goal scorers in that tournament. Or Johnny Gallo on the verge of imagine, emerging the top goal scorer. He has five goals. Now, the other competitors, we have uh, uh, Sadio Mane of Senegal, who has three goals, and there's Adam Unas of Algeria, who also has three goals. There's Cedric Bakambu, but they've crashed out. That's yeah. for Congo DR. Now, do you think that Sadio Mane and Adam Unas can score two goals to take Ojone Gallo off that highest goal scorer chart? Well, the possibility exists, mm. but then, you know, final matches involving two great Strong teams, teams yeah. and the two teams that were from the onset projected to play the final mm -hmm. match. This time around, Pondis really got it well because looking at the, uh, the, how the, the, the tournament had run, you know that these were the two best condition teams. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have an Algerian side that probably has the best of defense. Mm -hmm. Throughout the tournament, they've played six matches. So far, they've only considered two. Two goals. One of which was from penalty kick. So you, you know that scoring two goals against such a team mm -hmm. may be a, an Aquilian task. And at the same time, too, we also know that these are two teams hungry for the trophy. Mm -hmm. This is the first time that Algeria will get to the final since 1990. Mm -hmm. This is the first time uh, that Senegal will get to the final match since 2002. And even though uh, Algeria had won the trophy once, Senegal have never. And that's why I say an Akulian that such a match hardly produced uh, high scoring uh, uh, tally. Mm. So based on that, a Gallo may be comfortable. He may just be able to get that top uh, scorer's award. Mm. The first time in Nigeria we do that since the era of uh, Rashidi, Rashidi Yakini. Very true. And uh, I was supporting Ojeni Gallo to win. That. He got injured in that game against Tunisia, but the coach has confirmed that he, 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 he was actually injured and was not going to let him go back to his club side. Probably take a day or two before letting him uh, go. Now, let's talk about the coach. Should Gennaro be sacked. He has about he has done about two three years 
in the country. Now, do you think after all he has done for the Super Eagles, good or bad, do you think he should be, he should be let go of? Personally, I believe that Genero is in Nigeria to improve his CV because it is the super egos that have really projected him mm. to the limelight that he's getting. Mm -hmm. And he even knew that because I remember reading uh, an interview granted a FIFA magazine, they call mm. it FIFA 1904. He uh, alluded to the fact that the, I mean, handling Nigeria will likely really elevate his status mm -hmm. and that is what has happened because General is not a coach in the caliber of national team coaches that you would expect some years back we could say yes but the team had grown in stature it has grown in quality it is becoming a brand and we also need somebody who can manage that brand a good brand can be destroyed by a bad manager. Hmm. That's my take. Because uh, there are some errors. Because like if, you are, if, if I can take you back to the match with Argentina, uh, four minutes to the end of that match, you are still looking for a winner. When it is the other team that actually needed a win with hmm. a draw, you are true. You didn't slow down the game. You didn't make any attempt at substitution. You are, so let I have Incidentally, I've had the occasion to even discuss this with him, even on another TV program. And he said that he wanted to change uh, Musa. He wanted to change Musa, but some people were telling him, no, the Argentines fear Musa, don't, don't pull him out. Was Musa the only player on that pitch? Mm. You could have changed, you could have made a substitution to, to slow down the game and instruct your players. Now, clog. The, I mean, we make the midfield congested and play defensively. Don't let the ball move beyond the, the, the I mean, a certain area because these people are pressing hard. They have better strikers than us mm. and they have better pedigree. Beating them, eliminating them, make greater news than you being eliminated. Mm -hmm. So those are the, those are the considerations I expected him to make. And if his goalkeeper can commit the same error twice, then that means you, you never told that goalkeeper he, he committed that error. Mm. Because the goal, the second goal, against, I mean, that uh, the Algeria scored against us, that was not the first time that will happen. Mm. It happened in the friendly match we played with Argentina. Argentina. The goalkeeper standing behind his own wall mm. and then leaving a yawning gap for whoever takes that free kick to just slam the ball in. Mm. So... so I, I don't think, I think uh, he has overstayed. Mm. Now, there's a video trending on Twitter. We'll have that video show right now. There's a video trending on Twitter when the Super Eagles were being awarded their bronze medal. Now, he, was, uh, he collected his medal and he was shaking the officials. He got to um, the side of the, the NFL, NFL president, president, Amadou Pinnick, and it appeared that um, from what we saw from the video, I wish it could actually come up now so we could we understand what we're talking about. So he appeared as if um, he was being ignored by um, Amadou Pinnick. This is a video. And he, Amadou Pinnick walked away. He also looked at him like, okay, what's really going on here? Do you think that this is a, a sign that he doesn't um, want the manager to remain as a Super Eagles coach? Well, personally, I can't read the mind of another person. I can't mm. read the mind of Amadou Pinnick. But I happen to belong to a, uh, a WhatsApp platform where mm. I said it was not intentional. Mm. And then put another video clip later followed showing the two of them, showing him hugging the same coach mm. and uh, saying that he was just going to take another medal mm. because... Uh, he, has run, uh, he has run short of uh, uh, the, 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 the medal to be given to others. Mm. That, that, that was what happened. Mm. Uh, well, let's just take it that maybe he was just being absent-minded. Mm. Okay, let's take it that way that he was just being absent-minded. Talking about uh, the NFF president, Amadou Pinnick, where he, it appeared that he ignored the handshake of uh, the coach of the Super Eagles, Geno Raw. Now, on a, on a lighter note now, there's been this uh, surrounding story, rumor about the green jersey of the Super Eagles of Nigeria. They said the jersey has been jinxed, that anytime Nigeria wears that jersey, we get to lose. And I said to them, look, 
it's not all the matches that Nigeria played with the jersey that we got to lose. But do you think that there's a jinx surrounding that green jersey? I never believed there's a jinx surrounding any color for that matter. Mm. Uh, if I can just offer you the inside information to that green, uh, one of the board members, a top member in the NFF, mm. actually told me that they decided to jettison the white jersey because they felt that the white jersey was jinxed, that <laughs> the Super Eagles uh, uh, were not winning matches any time they were compelled to wear it. I just laughed it off. I said, okay, give an instance. The instance everybody uh, will always point out was the Africa Cup of Nations 2000, when we, had, we were compelled to wear white, even though we were playing at home, but technically, it was Cameroon, the Cameroon, team that emerged from the Ghana end that was the home for the mm. final. So technically, we, we, we have to oblige them the use of green and we wore white. And we lost that final match on penalty shootout. So that was the beginning of the belief that the white jersey was jinxed. Mm. Then I asked, when Cameroon defeated us in 19... They, they also mentioned that of 1988, that we also wore white when they defeated us in the final. And I said, what about 1984, when they defeated us in Abidjan? We wore green, they wore yellow. And we did, with our green, we didn't defeat them. Mm. Then when we did, defeated them in 2004 quarterfinals, we wore white, they wore green, and yet we defeated them. So the issue of uh, the white jersey being uh, jeans does not really hold water. And now, this olive green shirt. Now, the first, it was actually the first jersey that the super, this current Super Eagles wore mm. when it was on very last match, last year match. Mm -hmm. We wore it against Poland. It's despite the pedigree of Poland, we defeated Poland 1-0, wearing mm. that same jersey. And in the friendly match, played against uh, Egypt mm. in Asaba in March this year too. We wore that the green, uh, jersey. The green jersey and we lost. But it's just coincidental that we wore it against uh, Madagascar, we lost. We wore it against Algeria, Algeria we, we lost. lost. So yeah. it doesn't really matter. I don't think losing matches have to do with the color mm. of jersey. And incidentally, that olive green shirt was the original jersey that the Nigeria first national team, the UK tourists, wore. In the, during their matches in UK in 1949. Mm. So there's really nothing jinx Surrounding about the jersey. jersey. It's just people just believing or just people just want to say, okay, can we make a mountain out of this uh, hole? <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, thank you very much. And uh, you heard it all from Akule Sholaja, uh, the editor-in-chief uh, at Sports Village Square. There's no jinx surrounding the green jersey of the Super Eagles of Nigeria. It is how the team performs in a football game that really matters, not, not about the color of jersey that you are wearing. We thank you very much for coming on our show today. You're welcome. It's always a pleasure to mm. be here. Thank you. We hope to see you more often. Thank you very much. All right, uh, that's the end of the show, and I hope you enjoyed the package. Do enjoy the rest of your day. I am Udoka Njoko.